Hi, everyone. I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. I'm excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And today's guest is Matt Doyle. He's software development lead for interoperability at Epic. Welcome, Matt. Hey, John. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, excited to have this discussion. Uh, and, you know, there's a, a, a pretty big announcement, I think, uh, you know, that we're going to be talking about on, on this one around Tefka and QHINs and, and Epic. So, but before we dive in there, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Epic. Yeah, my background is in computer science. Uh, I've been a software developer with Epic for 15 years. And uh, the last eight or nine of those specifically have been focused on health information exchange and making sure that patients' data get to the right doctors at the right time. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, you know, so, you know, you guys announced uh, that you're going to, you know, be supporting Tefka and becoming a QHIN. You know, what is Epic's view on Tefka, and why has Epic decided to kind of get behind it and take part? Tefka is a great opportunity, and we're excited to be partners with the ONC and with the Sequoia uh, project to work on Tefka. To understand where we're going, I think it helps to have a view of how we've gotten to this point. So the first generation of interoperability, Epic launched Care Everywhere about 15 years ago, and that's our platform. Oh, it's been 15 years? Yeah, it's 15 years. (laughs) I forget, I guess time flies. (laughs) Yeah, well, in that time, uh, a lot of great success stories, but I think the biggest one is that all of our customers in the US are exchanging health information in real time for treatment. And that adds up to 10 million charts every day. So that, that's wildly successful that we've seen folks be. Um, and then the second generation was with Care Equality. Are you familiar already with Care Equality, John? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, good. Yeah, so it, it's a framework uh, that goes across different networks and really crosswalks them all to make sure that a doc can see their patient's information at the point of care, even if they're, uh, even if they're colleagues at other hospitals or maybe using other vendor systems. So care equality also been greatly successful. 70% of hospitals in America are connected right now. Mm -hmm. So that's a great success story. And it really sets the stage for why Tefka is so important. Tefka is the next stage of interoperability. It's the opportunity for us to reach out to that remaining 30% and help them to achieve the same success of exchanging health records at scale. So that's why Epic is supporting Tefka. It's really the next logical step and our history of supporting interoperability. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, not to get too much into the weeds, but I think you know the weeds well. So is the data that's gonna be shared on Tefka versus Care Equality versus, you know, know, my chart, uh, you know, Care Everywhere, right? Like, you know, are, is the data fundamentally different or do you see it as similar data shared across all three, you know, interoperability options? Yeah, this is an important question to dive into. So uh, we build our health information exchange using open published standards. Uh, There are standards, bodies, organizations, many folks are probably familiar with HL7, who define when I want to explain a patient's allergies or a patient's medications, here's how you do it in a neutral way that all vendors can understand. So all of the platforms that we exchange with, all the ones I just mentioned, Care Everywhere, Care Equality, and in the future, Tefka, all use standards-based exchange, specifically CDA documents. Yeah, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how that evolves from a standards standpoint. Well, why does Epic uh, plan to apply to be an inaugural QHIN, as they're calling it, Qualified Health Information yeah. Network, when the application's open? I think that was an interesting choice for an EHR vendor to decide to become a QHIN. Uh, you know, why, what was going into that thinking? You know, why did you decide to do that? We have an important role to play encouraging adoption of Tefka. For Tefka to be successful, it's critical that we have broad participation across the entire spectrum of folks within healthcare. So that means EHR vendors like Epic. It also means hospitals, it means provider organizations, it means public health authorities. And this is a wonderful opportunity to help both providers and patients get the information that will help them to make good health decisions. So Epic's commitment to this is clear, uh, and I hope that our announcement encourages others to participate too. Yeah, it does bring up a good question. Who else is going to be a QHIN? We've seen some of the interop ones already say their intention, but I think we're just at the start of knowing who's really going to be a QHIN. So that's a good point. 
Um, what benefits do you kind of see provider organizations and patients really receiving from your participation in QHIN? Is it, is it about that other 30% you kind of mentioned or what benefits, you know, obviously at the end of the day, interoperability doesn't matter if it doesn't benefit providers or patients, right? Yeah, well, both are going to benefit a lot. On, on the provider side, holistic access to patients' uh, medical records means that they can see the full patient story. And that means that it's easier and it's faster to get patients medical information and then using that history to save time while you're delivering care. If you already know what medications your patient is taking, what medical problems they've had in the past, then that will make it easier to give high quality care and save you time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, anyone that's filled out a form twice at the same doctor. Uh, <laughs> no, no one enjoys doing that. We've all been through that, right? Uh, you know, let alone, you know, having the information you need, you know, I still think of the emergency room showing up and, and them not knowing your past history. I think that's a, a, you know, we need to solve that problem for sure. Well, and that's a perfect connection to how this helps patients. Uh, we're all patients and uh, we put an immense amount of trust in our care team, into our doctors, our nurses, our pharmacists. It's a really personal experience for each of us the more complete information that they have, the more that they can help understand our history and then help us make good care decisions. I think one easy example might be, suppose, suppose I'm on vacation in California and uh, something bad happens, I get into a car accident. So I'm at the emergency department. If I have an allergy to penicillin, I really want the doc there to know that. Exactly. Because I don't want a, uh, a mistake that really could harm me. And as patients, all of us are going to benefit in ways that uh, really make for happier and healthier patients. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I think what's interesting when I talk to many patients that aren't in the industry, right? They're like, I thought this was already happening, right? <laughs> like, but they don't understand the complexity that's associated with right. it from both a standard st standpoint, from an organizational culture, et cetera, standpoint that, uh, you know, many to think that it happens when in fact it, it doesn't often. So it, it's a, there's an education that will have to happen there, I think, for patients as well. So. Yeah, that, that's been a shift over the years. I think when we started this journey 15 years ago, people didn't expect it and were pleasantly surprised. But now you're right. When, when we talk to providers and uh, when we visit clinics, we find patients just expect this. Patients ensure and entrust. They want their docs to have their full medical record. And when that doesn't happen, uh, it's a missed expectation. So, you know, coming back to Tefka, this is a way to really satisfy patients uh, not just to be healthier, that's important, but also to be happier. Because as you said, they're not saying the same thing twice. They're not filling out the same forms twice. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, thinking bigger, right? I mean, and you, you gave some, you know, uh, examples of the three elements and efforts that, you know, Epic's made in interoperability. But what would you say is Epic's kind of broader view around healthcare interoperability beyond just Tefka? Our core, core goal is to help patients and providers make healthy choices. And broadly adopted interoperability that's easy is really a key part of making that vision happen. So yeah, as, as I said earlier, this has been a consistent part of our actions and, and how we've worked with the healthcare community. That includes Care Everywhere, Care Equality. We help co-author many of the industry standards. Uh, FIRE is, is a standard that a lot of people are talking about. We co-authored that. 95% uh, of our community has already met the ONC fire expectations for 2023. Wow. So when you take all that in view, TEFCA is really just a logical step. It's a continuation of the pattern that, that we've been doing with our customers for a long time. Yeah. I think you said the right word. Patients want it easy. You know, so someone said, uh, you know, there was a discussion, should patients have access to the info, which I think we've all made clear patients should, right? Perfect. But then someone else commented and said, but do patients want access? <laughs> and my answer has always been, some of them do, chronic ones maybe, but for the most part, they want it actually just to be shared. <laughs> they want the doctors to share the information, not themselves. Uh, you know, and, and, but it's an interesting balance in our current system that's so separated between different organizations, right? So I, I think it's interesting that you said making it easy to transfer that information between provider organizations. And that's a great example of how personal healthcare is, because each of us take a different level of active role in our care. 
But it's important that it's easy for patients to be an active participant in whatever level makes sense for them. Uh, sometimes that's as simple as I just want to open an app on my phone and I want to use my chart to look at my medical record. Sometimes that's I want to send a message to my doc. Uh, and for some folks who are really tech savvy, that might be I want to take my record and, and do something else with it. So it's really important that we meet patients where they are and we make it easy for them. Excellent. Well, Matt, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us and kind of share Epic's view on interoperability and, of course, Tefka. And, uh, and, and you know, I think I think it is a significant announcement that Epic's going to uh, uh, apply to be a QHIN. So thanks so much for sharing and thanks everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me, John.